What's up guys, Eric here and welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season four, episode titled Uprising. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You've been warned, let's get into it. So this week's episode was what I like to call a budget reducer. Not a lot of big CGI stuff going on, no major Ghost Rider stuff, no Quake flying around or using her powers to cause earthquakes or cars to flip upside down, not a lot of anything outside of some storyline information and character development. But that's okay, it was still pretty good. And due to a request, I'm going to start scoring these episodes at the end of my video and we'll do this with my CW reviews as well. Then you can let me know your score in the comments below. So I want to start out with Mac. I just love the direction of this character. He's so down to earth and he really is just your everyday guy stuck in the middle of enhanced people, inhumans, crazy tech, and cybernetic implants. He's so relatable and I loved his development in this episode. He says what everyone watching is thinking. I can't forget to mention the crazy fight scenes, which by the way, it was excellent choreography and Mac was great in those. He went crazy and he really shines in combat and it's hard to believe he started out as just a mechanic on the show. I hope he evolves even more and sticks around for a while. I also loved his interactions with Yo-Yo this week. So let's talk about Yo-Yo. It was like all of her lies caught up to her, which is funny considering how fast she is. Her personal life is a wreck now. Her friends know she's inhuman and they don't want anything to do with her. This is bad for her, but probably good for us since they will most likely want to bring her into the fold full time. The reason why? Well, the watchdogs, of course. So the title of this episode, Uprising, has to do with the Watchdogs and what they have planned. So the Watchdogs wanted to frame the Inhumans for terrorism by using some advanced EMP devices that they had everyone stumped. S.H.I.E.L.D. wanted to go public again, and this was a snag in their plan. Not to mention their new director is an Inhuman, so until they were able to expose the Watchdogs as the real terror group, this was probably something that wouldn't have looked very good to the world. When Coulson said, I was afraid this would happen, he was speaking about the Accords and Enhanced Registration getting into the wrong hands. Within the registration, there's probably a subcategory of just Inhumans, so it was easy pickings for the Watchdogs. Speaking of Coulson, it's kind of hard to watch him as just a side character. For most of the series, he has been the stand-in director of S.H.I.E.L.D., so to watch him reduce to a regular agent is tough, but it's full circle, I suppose. With the new director, Jeffrey Mace, we have a different tone for S.H.I.E.L.D. Also, in case you're wondering, this is how the Avengers won't find out that Coulson is still alive. He's not going to be on TV since he's not the director. And since the general public isn't privy to any classified information, this includes Tony Stark and the rest of the team, they won't know that Coulson is still alive. Now let's talk about May for a moment. It was very painful watching her in such a vulnerable position. She's usually the rough, tough, kick-ass agent who comes in to save the day, aka the Calvary as she does not like to be called. <laughs> this week she spent most of her time on the edge of death, and I wasn't really worried about her in this episode. I was just curious how she would come back from it and if she would still be affected by whatever it was that was stuck in her head and it was pretty cool to see how they used Ada's power supply to bring May back. So let's speak on that for a moment, Ada and her power supply. If you were wondering how the life model decoys may come into play for S.H.I.E.L.D., this pretty much introduced that and explained it to us, really. They have a self-contained, magnetically shielded power supply. And this is huge. So not only is this perfect for using the decoys in the field within this EMP tech that the Watchdogs have, but it's also very useful if they can modify that same uh, power source for their weapons and vehicles. EMP, meet life model decoys. It also felt like Ada was counting the days until she could turn into Ultron on Dr. Radcliffe. So I want to discuss Robbie and Daisy for a moment. Since we didn't see much action from them, albeit the fight scene in the street at the start, which was really cool, by the way. Uh, no flaming skull or anything like that. Uh, we did get more re reinforced information about how Robbie came across his powers. He did make a pact with an evil force, or so he calls it the devil. He did it for his uncle, and now he's stuck with it. This is very close to Robbie's comic book origins. We also find out that his brother helps keep him on the straight and narrow. And I know Robbie says his brother doesn't know about him being Ghost Rider, but I have a feeling his brother knows more than he's letting on to. And finally, we get a glimpse of the mastermind behind the Watchdog's uh, terror plan is Senator Nadir. Now, this isn't a character that I'm familiar with with the comics, and I went looking and looking and looking, and I really couldn't find anything. I know there's a DC character named Nadir, but that's something completely different. If you guys have any information on Senator Nadir that I may have missed, uh, you can let me know in the comments section. Uh, we find out that her brother is stuck in a Terra Genesis cocoon but we have no idea like why or how that happened 
he was, you know, was he a human that was affected and never transformed? Is he some kind of new inhuman that hasn't been able to break out of it? Look, I'm going to assume her extreme stance on the Inhumans has to do with the state of her brother, and he may not actually have anything to do with the plot of the series other than simply being the device for her stance on enhanced people. So I'm going to give this episode a 7 out of 10. It wasn't the best, wasn't the worst, it was slightly above average for me. Again, I totally understand this is a budget reducer episode, lots of story, uh, lots of plotline advancement, and they were really just filling us in on information for the rest of the season. Although it wasn't as action-packed as some of the other episodes, I feel like this one advanced the plot quite a bit. So what did you guys think? Enjoyed the slower pace of this episode? Did you miss seeing the Ghost Rider in action? You have any idea who Nadir's brother is or how he will work in the season? Let me know in the comments below and give me your score out of 10. What did you think of this episode? If that's all I got for you guys today, check out Monday for my rant and preview where we'll talk about all the CAW shows and what we can expect for the coming week. I will also be doing a bonus reverse flash video as requested by many of you. Lots of you guys wanna try and understand you know, how the reverse flash fits into what's going on with legends and, and what happened over at the flash. I'm going to try and fix that for you guys and explain as best I can. So stay tuned for that video. It will be up before the flash comes out on Tuesday. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. You guys enjoy your weekend and I will catch you later.